Hey everybody, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I take this pot holder set and embroider each piece with my flatbed embroidery machine. These are just sets that you find at your big box stores. I'm gonna embellish them to personalize them and I'll show you how I do this. Okay, for this project, I'm gonna need pretty much the basic things that I always use for embroidering. I'm gonna be using a five by seven hoop. I'm going to use some tearaway stabilizer. Um, I have the items that I'm going to be embroidering on. And this is a little bit different because I have a flatbed. So the pot holder is tubular and I don't have a tubular hoop. So I'm going to also need a seam ripper because we're going to rip this side seam out and actually cut through this so that we can hoop it, stitch it. And then I'm going to go to the regular sewing machine and stitch it back up, okay? So we'll get started. First, I'm gonna cut some stabilizer. Move that out the way there. Make sure your stabilizer is nice and tight and that it's all the way in there on all four sides and that you have extra stabilizer on the end on the edges so that you know it's not going to slip out. The first thing I always stitch when I do these sets, I stitch the towel because if I have to alter anything, the towels I can afford to go ahead and replace without it costing so much as far as um wasting supplies you know not saying that these are overly expensive projects but just for the sake of not wasting too many things I always do the towel first and I did forget to mention that with the supplies you will also need some water soluble stabilizer I use that to top over my towels so that the needle doesn't get caught and I use those little markers to make sure that I am centered. And you can fill them through there and it's pretty centered. So let me get the water soluble stabilizer that I keep in a bag off to the side. And what did I do with my scissors? This design is a little bit bigger than what I usually do when I just do names that go across the bottom of the towel. So I'm going to put a little bit more stabilizer in place just for the sake of making sure that it's all covered with the um, water soluble stabilizer. And at this point, I'm just going to pin it all in and try not to stab my fingers. And I just smooth it out as I go. Let me move that before I lose it. Then I'll be on a mad goose chase looking for my seam ripper. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and finish pinning this all down and I'll meet you back at the machine. Alrighty, so now I'm back at the machine. I have my design loaded already, as you can see there. I am using the Innovis VE2200, which is a brother uh, machine. They call it the Dreammaker XE. And so I've got everything loaded. My thread is threaded and it's coming through. I'm going to lower the pressure foot and start stitching and now this design will take about a half an hour to stitch so i certainly will not sit and record the whole thing because it's just stitching i'm not going to be doing anything special at this point other than letting the design stitch on out and i'll check back in with you okay we're nearing the end of the first set of stitches and I'll take this off after it's complete, get it cleaned up and put the next piece on. 
Okay, so I've got it off of the machine and I am going to unpin it so I can get it off of the hoop. And I'll be able to, uh oh, I gotta get that needle. Oh, one of these straight pins fail. But um, once I get it off of the hoop, I'll be able to see if I like the way it's stitched out and I will compare it to, or not compare it to, but I'll lay it up against the other pieces to see if I think that it'll be too overbearing. Um, the persons that this is for, I know them pretty well and I, I think that this will be good for them as far as the sizing. I think that they'll like it. And I'll get that cleaned up in a little bit, a little bit better. Well, a lot better actually. But um, because it's on paper, it just pulls right off of the stabilizer. And of course you'll go through and you'll clean the back all up so that it's nice and neat. But um, what I wanna do now is see, and I could have done a trace or something just to see how I would like it against this actual item. But I just want to see if I think it'll be too big against this pot holder. And I don't. I think it'll be perfect. So I'm going to keep it this size for the pot holders. I think I'll actually keep it this size for the whole set. So I don't have to go back and do any resizing. Yeah. That'll be good. So the sizing is where I want it at. And like I said, I know that that was just like an unnecessary risk in just stitching it out and then seeing if I like the size or not. But we don't do everything the way we ideally should. And I've got just enough tear away left so that I can hoop one more item in there. Did I not unscrew that to loosen it? No, I didn't. Get that good and tight. And just like I do with everything else, you know, you can pretty much see that this will be the center point. And if you have a grid on your table, cutting mat or anything, you can pretty much see where your center point will be if you trace from point to point and they meet right there in the center. I don't have a, um, there's some chalk right here. I'm just gonna mark that center. That's where your center is gonna be at, okay? Just so you'll know. But for this item, make sure you don't have any stickers or tape on it. I am going to fold it in half so that it is centered as far as the actual item is concerned. I'm going to push that tag out and lay the center fold right there against that little, this little nodule right here. Okay. And you have nodules on all four, all four sides. So I'm going to lay it against that little nodule there so that I know that it is centered and just make sure that it goes straight up so that it's run up so that I know it runs into this nodule and it won't be crooked. And then I'm going to pin it in place. I'll pin the bottom part in place first, and then I'm going to pin the top. And I don't think it'll shift too much. I'm going to put that on the machine and stitch the design again on this. And let me just be in sure. Yeah, that's enough space for it. Okay, so I'm going to stitch this out and I'll be back. Okay, I've got it on the machine here. I am going to do the same thing again, lower the pressure foot and stitch. And don't worry about all of that um, lint that you see on there because that lint will come up with the lint brush or some tape, whatever you have handy, okay? So I'm going to start stitching this design out and I'll be back.
Okay, just a little side note. You see where it's stitching really close to the bottom of the design. I did have to stop the machine and take the straight pin out because the needle, the pressure foot would have been bumping against the needle and it would have just caused a disaster. So that's another reason you definitely wanna make sure you're looking at where everything is being stitched at. And this design is a little bit bigger than what I normally put on pot holder sets. Um, so, I had I had to take the needle out. Straight pin. I keep calling them needles, but the the straight pins. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna let this finish stitching, and I'll check back in with you. Alrighty. So this one is done stitching. I'm gonna take this off of the hoop, and we will get the next one stitched out. Alrighty. Okay. So I have the next one hooped, and what I did this time instead of putting that pin on the bottom to make sure I don't look away too too long and it hits my needle or my needle hits it I pinned on the sides okay so I've got it pinned down in three points because if you have watched my videos you know I like to float everything instead of, instead of actually hooping so I'm gonna get this back on the machine and stitch this out and we've got two pieces down two to go because we've got to do the mitten last okay so the second pot holder is done as far as the stitching is concerned and I'm gonna take that off and I've got two pot holders that I've got to get cleaned up I have this towel that I've got to get the backside cleaned up and I said earlier I only had I had two down and two to go I forgot this is actually a five piece set and I still have the white towel to do but because I'm gonna do this with black thread I'm going to do the oven mitt next okay the oven mitt is a little bit trickier and that's because you know with the flatbed i don't have that tubular hoop so i have to cut the or open up you know i'm cutting <laughs> this it is what it is i'm cutting open the pot holder or the oven mitt i should say so that i can actually lay it flat and get it stitched so what i've got to do sorry I've, i'm got other tools here because I do vinyl as well. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open up this side. Yeah, I'm gonna open up this side because I think when I close it back up, it's I, it'll be easier on this side. Got your seam, seam ripper. And let's see, I get different brands. Some of them don't have this uh, extra covering of stitch on the inside, some of them do. So I'm just gonna go in and pluck it. You have to be very careful with these seam rippers because you will turn around and um, tear up your whole item. Now this black piece that's covering this seam on the inside, I'm not putting that back in, okay? It's not even there going all the way down. I'm not gonna put it in uh, right here. I never do so far. I've not had any complaints about it. That comes up pretty easy for that part anyhow. I'm just gonna go through and try to get that out of the way. You'll find different brands, the pot holder qualities are different and most of them are all priced the same. This set came from Walmart and I want to say it was like $4.97, so a dollar a piece because there are five pieces and you can get pot holder sets sometimes at the Dollar Tree for a dollar a piece. And actually it's cheaper at the Dollar Tree because the squares are two for a dollar. Okay, so now I'm going to look for where I can get between the two pieces of fabric where it was seamed together, if that makes sense for you. Okay, and I'm going to take my seam ripper and I'm going to get it down in there in between the stitches, but I don't want to actually you know, rush and rip the uh, pot holder, the oven mitt. 
I call them all pot holders, but I know some people are more technical than others. So I try to call it what it is when I do these videos, but as you hear, sometimes I'm always calling my straight pins needles, but I do know that they are straight pins. I'm going to clip that. And because this here is sewn over it, I'm going to clip or try to seam rip some of that stitching out of the way. I almost went through too far. So why you got to go slow. And in terms of the um, part that's going across the top, it will be sewn right there when I close it back up. I'm going to cut this here out of the way because that's just extra that I'm not going to be using. And I really just want to get as much of this seam plucked as I can or taken apart. This here batting, it does cause lint. So if you don't want lint all over everything, do what you need to do to prevent that from happening or to decrease it. So you're just picking all the way through there. Now I think I have pretty much all of the seam going up the side separated. So now I'm going to try to hold it apart and just cut. Okay. Oh, they shorted me on some fabric. They actually had another piece tucked in there. Hmm. Oh, well, it'll be okay. So now I'm going to continue taking the pot holder apart and I'm going to take it apart down to about right there, down to about right there. These pot holders are what actually made me decide that I did want to go into embroidery as a business. Even though I still work full time, this is something I really do enjoy doing. And I think it's just because of the whole personalization aspect of it. I'm going to pull, pluck a little bit more of that stitch out because I just wanted to be able to lay a little flat. Okay, that'll work. Now, there are a hundred ways to skin a cat, as they say. But what I always do, because I already know that this is stitching where I want it to be, I just make sure that my pot holder will fit right in there which it will and i see my top center i have about an even amount on each side with just a little bit more where the seam is going to be because i'm going to pull up some of that and so just for the sake of making sure i'm in the center i use my pot holder the little square Fill that little nodule because I know that's where the center is at. And I think I want to pull this over just a little bit. And that should be centered well. Even though it looks a little off center, once it's stitched up, you will see what I mean. Because some of this is going to be taken back into closing it up. And remember, it stitches real low down here. So I'm going to pin on the outside. And I'm going to pin up at the top. And someone had mentioned in the comments of another video when I was doing a shirt, they asked if I tried clips and I keep forgetting about clips for holding other items in place or out of the way. 
And I have wonder clips, but they won't work on bigger items, but on smaller towels and things, wonder clips do work good. Um, but I do, that's just a random thought that I'm having out loud right now. I do have to get me some clips that will work for bigger items such as clothing. Okay, so I've got this pinned down pretty well. I'm going to take this to the machine and get it started. Alrighty, so it is on the machine now and you see how I mean it's flat enough so that it's not getting sucked all up into the machine. It won't get caught up underneath anything. So I'm going to start that. Hope my fingers aren't in the way. Get that stitching up. I'm going to have to rethread the needle. Alrighty, sorry, I did not re record rethreading the needle, but I'm holding the phone in my hand right now because I have the tripod over at the table. So it's just going to stitch out again. And once again, it's about 34 minutes on the stitching and I will let that run its course and I'll show you what I do to close it up on the sewing machine. Alrighty, it's still stitching along pretty good and we got pretty good clearance so that we won't be sewing up any of the design when we go to close it up, okay? So I'm just going to let it keep on stitching and I'll check back with you. Okay, so I've got this off of the machine. I'll unpin it. And I'm going to take it off of the hoop. I do still have this white towel to hoop that um, I'm going to do with black thread. Now I'm going to clean the back of this up by tearing out all of the um, tearaway stabilizer. And some people, I do know that some people use a cutaway stabilizer so that stabilizer is left in there. But I have just always preferred to use a tearaway. And I just use whatever's handy to scrape it away just so I can get my fingernail up under there to tear it all out, okay? So I'm going to finish cleaning this up and then I'll show you how I pin this together so that I can um, sew it up on a sewing machine, okay? Okay, so I've got pretty much all of the stabilizer cleaned up from inside the stitches. So what I'm going to do is turn this completely inside out. I want to line everything up so that it can be stitched together neatly. And I'm going to use my longer needles to pin these together. And I'm not going to pin a whole lot of the points together, just enough so that I can um, keep it keep it closed. And I just want to make sure that I don't have anything folding under so that everything does get sewn closed. And then since this is where it ends at, I'm going to overlap stitching over that ways. So I'm just going to pin over there as well. So I'll have an idea as to how far back I need to go at minimum. Okay, so I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and get this closed up. And while I am sewing, I will go ahead and get the last towel hooped up and on the machine so that it can be stitching out while I'm putting the, the oven mitt together, okay? So I'll get that done. And since this has stripes on it, I'm going to use the stripe as my bottom line because I really don't want to stitch through the stripe okay and it's just as I did with the other towel I'm gonna pin one point I'm gonna put some water soluble stabilizer on top of it and pin it all down I'm gonna change my thread to a black thread and I will get it stitched out Okay, so I'm at my machine now. I have everything pinned up and I am going to show you how I just go through and stitch. Now, because I got shorted on some fabric, I'm actually going to have to make up for that. And what I'll do is I'll show you what I do. I'm just going to kind of come down from off the edge and I'm always going to do a back stitch on it so that it secures it. And then I'll come down and around. Okay. 
So I've got black thread loaded up in my machine. And I do apologize for the extra noise because I have that white towel stitching in the background. I just want to get these things done so I can get going with some other things that need to be done. This is the SE 425, the embroidery sewing combo machine that I'm just using as a sewing machine right now. And I'm back stitching right now so that everything will be in place. And then I'm going to come forward and slightly at an angle just because I have to compensate for that fabric that is not there. And that is something that happens sometimes. You undo something and you realize it's not constructed exactly as you had imagined it being constructed. Or it just might be one of those one-off items that truly just is not constructed the way most of them normally are. So I'm just going to do basically a straight stitch. This is at 3.5 and it's a straight but tight stitch. And I'm just making sure that, you know, everything stays in place. Making those turns can be a little tricky sometimes, but it's not too bad. And now I'm going to stop right here, leave the needle down lift up the pressure foot and turn it so I could come back down here and I'm just going to continue and just making sure that to the best of my ability I keep everything straight That turn was a little tricky right there for the simple fact that I have a big old printer right here and um, I don't have a whole lot of sewing room right now. And I did come back further than I intended, but that's fine. It just makes it a stronger stitch. And before I take the needles out, I always check the other side just to make sure everything did get caught up in the stitch, okay? And if you think you didn't, just go over it again and you can go over it on the opposite side if you want to. I'm gonna take these pins out. There are a couple of pieces that look like they may not have all gotten caught up as far as all the layers. So I am gonna go back over this from this side and I'm just gonna bring my stitching from the fingertip part first and work my way back down to the very end. And I just want to make sure everything is actually caught up in the stitching so that nothing is falling apart if they wash it. And from what most people told me who order these personalized pot holders, they just use them as kitchen decor. But just in case, you don't want to send something off that you would say, oh, it'll look cute anyways. You want to make sure it's not going to be raggedy and falling apart on somebody. I just want to make sure that this all gets caught in because this layer here is actually holding in that fuzziness from inside the, um, well, from the batting. And then this is where I come up at a slight angle to catch all of the material. And I'm just doing this a couple of times because I wanna make sure it doesn't pop if somebody puts their hand in too fast. And so now this is all stitched up. I do always put my hand inside just to make sure you know, nothing's sticking out. Everything is sewn up. You don't want to turn around and have a hole somewhere because you thought you had everything stitched, but you missed something. So I'm just going to flip this inside out, which is probably the most difficult part of this project for me anyhow. And then I'll get a lint brush after I have it all folded out and I'll get it ready for packaging. Alrighty, I'll see you back at the other table. 
Okay, so I am back at the table and let's get this lint brush. I need to change that strip on it. And I'm gonna clean up this uh, oven mitt to get that extra lint off of it so that it's not so crazy looking. And um, this stuff is serious. We might have to go and get some duct tape and roll over this. Duct tape will work. That th uh, string right here is from the thread that I actually took the thing apart. So just clean it up over and over with a lint brush or some tape. Um, I am going to go and get some tape and try to get a better job at this done because this, all of this here, it might not matter to them, but to me it does. I'm not going to present this to anybody with lint all over it like that, even though I know it's from when I turned it inside out and was messing with the, um, the, the batting. So I'll get this cleaned up and soon the white tile with the black thread will be done and I'll show you how all of this looks when it's all done. Alrighty, so this is the white towel that is finished. I've got the water soluble stabilizer cleaned up off of it. And there's also the black towel to go along with it. And then I have the black oven mitt and two of the squares. So that is it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to hit me down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you next time.